Good afternoon everyone and welcome uh, to our live open day. Um, I'm Jade from the admissions office and um, I welcome you to St. Edwards. This is a first for us um, uh, so thank you for being a part of it. Um, the main aim of the open day is that usually um, under normal circumstances the, the open day would have been um, the school would have been open, would have welcomed parents and parents would have come in to see the, the kids and the, the works that they've done but under the current circumstances we're still giving you an open day um, uh, just with a little bit of a twist and through a different, through a different route. Um, please give us a thumbs up or comment whenever you are um, when you when you've come in and you've joined please feel free to ask questions as you as we go along um, write um, your comments anything whatever you want questions just positive feedback anything you wish um, so today you'll be hearing from our different heads of section and some heads of department as well um, we have five main um, sections, which is the early years, from age two to, um, to six, the junior school from age seven to ten, the middle school from age eleven to twelve, thirteen, the senior school from age fourteen to 15, 16, and then finally the sixth form, um, which we offer the IB diploma, um, and that is from 16 to 18. Um, as we go along throughout throughout the next hour, hour and a half, you'll be hearing from um, all the heads of, of section, and they'll be explaining to you um, the different um, programs and the different methodologies that we, we um, use and the approaches we take. Um, uh, please um, feel free again to comment whenever you have questions and I will answer that uh, as the head of section um, straight away and hopefully we'll get a, a, the answer that you wish. I am going to be transferring, handing over to the headmaster who will be explaining basically what we do at St. Edward's. So yeah, I will be handing over. Good afternoon, my name is Brother Mark Ward. Thank you for taking the time to come and, and visit us here today. It's a bit different from our normal open day. Hopefully, you'll be able to comment and ask some questions if you want to. So, you're all ready. I'm going to say a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from Maryland in 83 years of international. I've also had the uh, privilege of working with the American systems, the AP curriculum, the UK, North of Europe, Holland, and I've had essentially a very broad education for myself. Now, um, what's this got to do with anything? It has brought me to my philosophy of education. And there's one thing that is holds an entire organization together. It's business or if it's um, any organization, and that's the mission statement. The reason I'm standing here is to show you our mission statement. Now, as I said, mission statement is the view of the community, the organization. Every organization, business, school has a mission statement. And what's terribly important is that this mission statement is lived. The academics are important, but I've, if you can just show here, Jane, for a minute. There's a few points here which particularly strike me. Um, this is um, exemplary citizens. We want our children to understand, we want our graduates to understand that they have a role in society. We do put a strong emphasis on character formation. Perhaps in an old fashioned in today's world, the character, being a bit of good character is, is incredibly important. We also understand that many of our students are going to be leaders. This is crucial. And finally, and this is perhaps particularly important these days, is contribute to the well-being of society. If anything, these days, at this time, with our current situation, knowing that you're part of a society and not an individual is terribly important. We're going to wander down now, um, and I hope 
this whole thing would go all over. <laughs> if she goes, we, we pick her up again. We'll put her walker down now through the steps and I can talk to you about it in There's one aspect of St. Edward's that has always struck me. And, that, and people comment on this. And that is the space we have. And the grounds. I don't know this all. Have you shown them a little bit about the grounds yet? No, not yet. Okay. Leave it up to you. Some point during this, this process, you can show yes. Them. Most people who come in, they comment on how spacious they are. Now, having space around you is terribly important. It seems that it allows the students, the boys, the girls, to have more canvas about them. We have a lot of greenery, and we have activities which have gone for the garden, from the gifted ones up to the more senior ones. But whatever it is about nature, it seems to bring a sort of calmness to everybody involved. In fact, we've opened up also to different activities such as, well, we've had a, a ball, we've had different organizations come in and, and make use of our facilities. Maybe we can stop here for a second. Yeah. I'm getting a bit of shade here because we're in Malta and it's been a beautiful day. Um, I could talk for a long time about curriculum and about our academic achievements and so on. Don't get me wrong, academic achievements are crucial because still, whether we like it or not, the currency with which we often judge an individual is about the academic achievements. What grade did they get? Um, what was the highest score and so forth? Um, so What's more important for me and us is a concept, the basic concept of how we do business here. And that is called TUL. We do not want, and this might sound odd coming from the digital, we do not want our boys simply to learn something. In the old days, you could learn three poems, maybe a few formula, produce those, and being really a high grade. But it was of no use to you afterwards. But we want you to learn only if you've understood something. And to understand something, you have to think about it. So it's think, understand, learn. T U L. That is the core of how we do business here. I know in many schools, when you are going around, you'll be shown the library, the media center, you'll be shown some high tech stuff. But the real question you need to be asking is how is the, how is the curriculum delivered? And this idea of think, understand, learn applies in all subjects, it applies in all year groups, and it's something that um, our teachers are very confident with. In fact, recently, we've just had seven teachers um, take a course with the uh, Zero Project at Harvard University, Education Department at Harvard. Now, this is a cutting edge, uh, it's a cutting edge university where we all know but what they're trying to do is to get this idea of pulling the knowledge out of the students. This is what we're trying to do, and this is what we're doing all the time. They have the knowledge, so give it to them, pull it out, make connections, and with this then you can progress. I'm going to wander down here and hand you over to this step in your room. Be careful you don't drink <laughs> Something, something I mentioned to you about the use of our outdoor spaces, and I just see something here which is uh, reminded me of it. We've had our early years, if you can focus on the potatoes there, we had our early years, they planted the potatoes, uh, they watered them, and last Thursday, was it? Last Thursday, and indeed tomorrow, um, the potatoes have been dug up. Normally, we'd have the boys be in this case, they are much closer to the potatoes, and we've had great feedback from um, our parents and our boys as they prepared their dinners, including all of our potatoes. So we wander on with this. Another, another piece I want to do, again, using the outdoor spaces, these particular flowers, and I'm a biologist, so excuse me, these particular flowers are very rich in nectar. And we point this out, in fact, you can see a few bees over there. We point this out constantly, the connection that we have with our 
song. This F is our early years um, coordinator. So I've been telling people about uh, the bomb. Thank you very much. Now don't forget, you can comment, write, ask questions. <laughs> Thank you, Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so, just to introduce myself a bit, I'm Stephanie Greg, I'm the head of our years. Um, I'm going to be showing you around uh, our years here. So, currently, we are, well, many of the audience will know and remember it as that this is the headmaster's house. So, a lot of the older audience will move maybe to that. And, however, as we expanded, I think they expanded and they expanded, we took over um, and, and added the classes in the particular headmaster's house, basically. Um, the amount is the nursery classrooms and we can do two ones at the ground. As you walk around, you're going to see quite a bit of playground areas um, as they're safely inside enclosed spaces but there's enough space to roam around. Um, we like to give you the nature and talk about that a bit later on. Um, but they all have their types. So this playground is the nursery and grade two playground. Um, of course, they share the playground, they don't share the time slot. So um, nursery will play with nursery children, grade two will play with grade two children. The same would apply when we head over to the grade one side. Earlier it is a bit scattered around the Um but we make use of the outdoor spaces quite a bit. So we can go over to the one of the KG2 classes now. So it's one, two, three, two, three, two, three. Yep, that's good. That's good. Of course, they're all different um, shapes and sizes as classrooms would be. So we do cater for the amount of children within a class, depending on the class size. Um, some are smaller, some are, some are bigger. So as you'll also notice, we do have quite a bit of um, outdoor area. Um, it kind of dominates, I was very proud of it actually. And we do make use of it. Um, Teachers are great at taking all the children to engage in a number of hands on activities outside. So we try to avoid sticking to the classroom basically and have the children venture off within the safety of our college because obviously it's still on college premises and everywhere is gated, but they have the outdoor freedom that obviously the classrooms don't provide. So apart from the playgrounds, we have what we call the gardens where the children uh, many times join the college gardener and have gardening sessions. Um, they do basically a lot of outdoor activities. They'll take, they'll find a shady tree and have storytelling sessions. They'll uh, engage in a quite number of um, treasure hunts um, around college. So the teacher would get the topic of the week, get the, top, the task of the day, and take the children outside so they can Find whether it's for the younger ones, bugs um, hunts, um, uh, and also about girls basically. We try to make use of the drums in case we can. Now we're going to head over to the page one side. The program is a very fun. We believe in hands on learning, we do really create any experiences for the children. Um, uh, we will be in a lot of peer learning as well so that the children can learn off of each other and have ideas and share ideas. Um, the master mentioned to you with for I'm sure. Again, even in the, with the young ones, we give them, encourage them to think for themselves rather than giving them everything ready. And um, it's like to get them to be independent, obviously. Um, 
insults from topics to do for KG and year one. We're going to have a short Friday, and it's at half twelve. While from year two onwards, um, the boys join the rest of the school and finish at half three. Obviously, these have a much longer break time than. From nursery and KG, it's go ahead. While from year one onwards, the classes join the boys' school here, so it's boys only from year one onwards. Uh, apart from this, we have the hours are a bit staggered in the sense that we provide extra hours of traditional memory from half seven to half eight, and in the afternoon as well, from either half twelve to two for nursery. Um, and those are finished at 2 from 2 to half 3. Apart from that, we have the curricular as well, which is a variety of activities um, happening every day. So we try to all look at each other and the individual is flex. And I do say individuals because we do a very close attention to the shared child as being an individual. So the teachers form very strong connections with the children, with the class. And get to know them personally, their background, and we cater for their own needs um, within our program, obviously. The curriculum is followed, um, and the are had. We do have um, quite a structure, which is a balance. I do like the word balance because we have adult led activities and child led activities, so spontaneous learning going on as well. Um, again, to get them to think, come up with their own ideas, which is Return helps everybody else in class as well. So, this is the PG1 um, block. This is where we will walk up to the PG1 playground. So this is what our typical KG1 classrooms look like. Um, like I was saying, the curriculum is of course followed, but there is much more than that which we aim for. Basically, as you can imagine in a KG environment, a lot of social skills, language skills, the same applies for nursery, the same applies for everywhere else, really. And what is the learner now? We aim for the social skills, language skills, the sharing, independence. And which obviously is all scaffolded, everything, every single thing that this had um, is all scaffolded for future years, basically. Every year built upon the next. And the teachers, like I was saying before, um, they have a very close attention to the students and their individual needs. Um, we start every year seeing where each child is at and then see how we're going to help them to get to the next level of individual development. We do quite a bit of, as you see, I think it in this classroom, of sensory play, sensory learning. So, Engaging the child as a whole, it is of course a holistic approach. There are thematic approaches which take place. So we try and identify each area of development and cater for it as best as we can. Okay, we're back. So we're leaving the KG and we'll be heading over to the year one and year two, so. Quite a bit of walking in college. <laughs> um, 
And as I was saying, this, the program is still for you. So what they learn at nursery, they take on to year one, uh, to year one, and they build, they keep on building up. Um, so much so that we have, for example, uh, one of our programs is a redressing program, which is a literacy program by Ukrainian, which we've um, has been very very rewarding so far. I would believe it will carry on. So um, they start the program on page one, the kettle sounds. Um, and so in the air and so on and so forth and it start it then ends at year two where they're writing sentences and obviously more complex with the sounds. So this is what we refer to as the junior block. Um so the year one year six. We have every morning in year this year one and year two we have um, an assembly where the children gather together, they say the morning prayer, they sing some songs, they talk about any events that might be coming up. Events are quite big at college. Um, our calendar is always jam packed where it um, could be anything. We have um, road safety events, we'll have Mother's Day, Father's Day, we have Parents Day, um, obviously, the usual traditional class parties, concerts, um, sports days, there's always something going on. Um, so this is the year one corridor, and this is a typical year one class, so the boys are a bit empty at the moment, and um, I think mean, everyone can imagine why. Um, environment will feed up from one thing to the next. Uh, they have obviously fixed in sessions with the drama teacher, the drama music teacher, the sports, the art, um, so that's where it becomes a bit more structured. But we aim for, or so we aim for, I think throughout, is that the children fall in love with learning. So that's why I say experience, that's why we aim for that feel, good feeling um, within the classroom, with the teacher, um, and ultimately, as Edwardians would say, it's become an Edwardian. So, as we head over to year two, we have a look at a typical year two class. Again, our aim is to get the children to be responsible, um, trustworthy, reliable. They take their own initiative, um, honest, and uh, very importantly is that they help each other. So it's not just me, but it's my team, it's everybody else. Now I'll take you over to the year one and two playground. <laughs> Where you can meet Mrs. Lady, I will take you on for the children's team. Hi, it's Maria. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Jayan. I'm actually from the UK and I taught there for 20 years and was assistant head teacher before moving to Malta. I've been here now at St Edward's for three years, so this is my third year. So let me take you on a short tour of our magnificent junior school buildings. The junior school section is actually for boys from year three to year six. So that's boys aged from seven years old up to 11 years old, and then they follow through to middle school. Here we have the Maltese So we have our Maltese room. And this room is dedicated to the teaching of Maltese. Now we have two dedicated and specialised Maltese teachers. And 
that in this room, the top Maltese, we have six or seven lessons each week, depending on their age. And as a lot of our boys are not native Maltese speakers, we also have the option of Maltese for foreigners, which is very popular, where we make the fun learning experiences, so they have lots of activities to do, and they learn basic Maltese. However, they've done a year of this already, and they're really getting rather good. We also have English as a foreign language as well, which is we call TEFL, because many of our boys come from abroad, and when they first come to Malta, they need to, of course, to learn English. So we have TEFL lessons, and then the boys can actually join the Maltese group later on. During the summer months, we have extra English lessons. We have a four-week intensive training course for the boys who need to learn more English. This enables them to actually be introduced to the college and the grounds. Then they have. Now, this room, as you can see, we're very lucky that during the last holidays, we had the whole of the junior school. So in year five, the boys are introduced to French and Italian. So they have a two-year taster session of these languages, and that gets them used to the language that they're good at, and then they can choose when they get to year six which language they might choose in middle school. And they can also have a choice of Spanish as well. So if we move around, past our entrance hall, just past some of the work here that was done by our year five boys where they were designing an art, um, a model village. So they had to design their own houses and then they cooperated and put together the display. Here we have our lovely music and drama room. As you can see, the room is very spacious and light and in unusual shape. We're very lucky here at St Edwards because we have a very dedicated specialist music teacher, Miss Abigail Brown. And she's full of enthusiasm. She takes the boys for drama and music three times a week. And she coaches them in uh, role play, voice projection, and singing techniques as well. Uh, they learn simple instruments and rhythm. And the culmination of all this is our exciting concerts, which we have twice a year. We have one at Christmas, which is usually on a Christmas theme. And all the friends of St Edward's and the parents are invited to it. And the boys usually put on a show with speaking parts as well. These are always full of energy and enthusiasm. I'm always amazed how well the boys do. Later on we have a spring concert as well. I think we have a seat today as well for the boys to work in small groups. And then we'll take you up to the, up to the higher level. Now this building was actually the well, home of some of the masters in previous years who used to be housed here at St. Edward's. And so now of course it's been modernised and the large rooms turned into classrooms. So at the top of the stairs here we have our IT suite. This is actually I think, one of my favourite rooms, but you'll see why. There's a magnificent view out across the lawn. In here we have our suite, which consists of 25 new computers and chairs. We also have a projector that enables the teacher to project the lessons onto the screen as well. So the boys have two lessons a week, and they start off with basic keyboard techniques, um, inserting things into Word, documents, and then as they progress, they go through using PowerPoints, and then by the end of it, they're producing their own newspapers and worksheets. So you try to make sure that all the lessons are relevant to what they're learning already. That's very important. 
So this area up here houses the older children. So we've got the uh, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So that's going to get to 11 years old. So here at St Edward's, we try to activate the boys' prior knowledge and help them make connections between things. It's a very good way to learn. So on this side of the building, I'll show you one of the typical year three rooms. We have two parallel classes usually. Um, in year four, we're actually expanding. Um, we've got three classes at the moment. That means that they're quite small groups with only about 18 children. So this is one of our typical year three classes. Again, you can see it's quite light and spacious. Now the boys are grouped together because that too helps to enable their learning. Because we want them to be active and to participate. You might have heard earlier on the headmaster speaking about T-U-L. That's think, understand, learn. It's a form of visible thinking. And here we start them off quite young. So even though the boys are only seven years old, we actually ask them to think for themselves. So there's no spoon feeding here for Taurus and Tedwards. The boys have to think of the answer. So if they might ask a question, we then put it back to them and think, well, what do you think? How do you find that out? Why do you think that? So here we have actual uh, thinking, understand, learn activity. This is chalk talk, which accesses the boys prior knowledge and then helps them to question. So here I go, we're just starting off with science. And they had a key word in the middle, and the boys were just asked to work in groups. So every boy, as you can see, was given a different coloured felt tip, and they just had to silently brainstorm. So anything that came to mind. So here we've got some people thinking about science is the body, it's animals, it's plants. And then the boys would move around, still with their same coloured pencil, and then they can add on to what other people have written. So this child has written, I don't agree with this, but others have said, yes, I think this is great work. I think you're right. And this just enables the boys then to have an idea of what they're going to be doing. And this wonderful assessment tool as well, because then the teacher can pick this up, she knows which child uh, has written what, and it can be used as a great assessment tool to plan lessons then, because you know where the boys need to go. So then that leads to, in the end, I used to think this, but then at the end of the unit, now I think this. And it provides a reflection for our young learners as well. Over on the other side, we have our other year three class. So this is the child's class. And then this Bartolo's class. So as you can see, it's really a mirror image of the other class as well, with the boys in groups. It looks very empty at the moment without them all. It usually is buzzing with activity, with lots of things going on. We miss the boys greatly at this time. I hope they will be back to school soon. Over here, I've got some of these flames. And this one, again, just demonstrates the think, understand, learn. This is a CSI activity, which is colour, symbol and image. And in this lesson, the boys were actually being introduced to George's Marvellous Medicine, right at the beginning, when they didn't really know very much about the book. And after the first chapter, the boys were asked to just stop and consider what they had read. And they had to think of a colour that would just encapsulate the beginning of the book. So they had to think about the main points as well. And um, for instance, some of the boys here chose um, yellow because they thought the story was funny. And I said, why have you chosen yellow? And they said, oh, because yellow is a happy colour. It makes me think of fun things. Then they had to think of a symbol. So obviously they were taught about symbols in society. 
and just one symbol that they had to create to represent the book as well. So this is a no grumpy grandma's symbol or a sad face symbol. And then an image as well, something that they thought was the most important thing from the first chapter of the book. And here in year four, we're actually introduced to two more subjects. We have history and geography as well. So the year fours learn about ancient Greeks, and the year fives about the ancient Egyptians. But again, we try to make sure that it's a good, fun subject as well. So it's very active. Um, they're making modified oranges and sarcophaguses, and generally doing lots of active, fun things. Now I think here at St Edward's, we've got a very special school, and I think that's partly to do with the buildings, the history, but of course the most important thing is the staff and the pupils inside it as well. And our teachers and our learning support educators are a very dedicated team, I can tell you. We're also very lucky to have spacious grounds. We actually have an hour's lunch break, which is quite unusual these days for school weeks in Monitor. But this gives boys the time to just reflect, calm down, and follow their hobbies. So they're able to do extra drama if they wish to, with Heather and Brady, or some kids' art lessons as well. There's many sporting activities, there's lots of house competitions, there's tennis they can join in, basketball, football, and it keeps them very active and busy. Other boys just like using the grounds. They play games, they make up their own, they play tea, hide and seek, they make dens, and use the environment that we have. Over here is an area that wasn't being used very much. And we asked Jerry, our gardener, if perhaps we could take this over. And we have um, one of our LSEs, Miss Pauline Howarth, and she wanted to do something special for the boys. And so some of our year fives founded the Eco Club. Now this area of land is really theirs. So the boys themselves decide on what's happening here. Um, they decide if they're going to develop a part of it. And they're all, again, it's a great hub of activity. So boys have got tools here and the boys are digging, creating plants watering, looking after things, making sculptures and seating. Um, and of course, we're into recycling as well. So we're using our plastic bottles to help with the raised beds there. But it's a lovely area, this. It's just something a little bit different for those boys who perhaps aren't as active in sports. So we have lots of areas that the boys can choose what they would like to do. This time. Over here we'll pass our magnificent lawn, which again is a hive of activity in the summer. We have a climbing frame as well, which the boys love to go on. It builds up their strength. And the famous lawn over here was used for many of our school activities. Not long ago it was used for Grandparents' Day, just before we had to close. And we had a lovely day as the sun was shining, the boys came in with their grandparents, they could show them the environment where they were, and they had great fun together reading and having a picnic together. So it was just after World Book Day, and the boys then had a reading picnic with their grandparents. This area has also been used for International Day. Um, even in the junior school, we have, I believe, 23 different nationalities of boys, who, of course, are all very proud of where they come from. And we'd like to celebrate this fact and our diversity. So we hold an International Day for the last few years. And again, we open it up to the community, so that we've had parents in and friends of the college and the boys have been able to put on displays from different countries. They have made food as well, which is rather lovely. It's so cool. And we've generally had fun together. Now this is an 
saying as junior school expanded, we had to move our library out. Now this area has been created with new decking, and places for the boys to sit on shade. And now we have our new junior school library. So this area has many books, although there are lots in the classroom still as well. And the boys can come over here and choose books, which are divided into year groups. We've got a Maltese section as well, as we try to promote Maltese. We have a Maltese week, which we have once a year, where we have authors in, uh, Maltese authors, who come and talk about their work. Uh, we also do lots of special activities. We have uh, fatira making, Maltese songs, Maltese plays. So the boys really enjoy these things. So we try to have as many as possible. Lots of different outings as well, outside speakers for personal and social. So thank you very much for joining us here at St Edward's this afternoon. And if you have any questions at all, if you'd like to email us, and of course we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So thank you very much. I'll now hand you over the capable hands Oh, Mr. Watson. Hello, hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, before we actually leave the um, junior school and we walk the 100 metres up to the middle school, um, my name is Mr. Watson, but you can call me Mr. Watson. Um, I'm obviously from England. Um, I've worked and lived in Malta for the last 11 years. I'm very, very proud to be a part of St. Edward's College. It's a very, very, very special place. When I was in England, I started teaching in 1983. Um, I taught in a school um, for boys and girls. I taught mathematics. Then I had a promotion to a, a boys' independent school. Um, and there, not only was I in charge of the maths at that particular point, I was also charge of, in charge of all of the sport. Now, that meant that I got the opportunity to visit lots and lots and lots of schools Throughout the, the, the length and breadth of, uh, of England, we used to play rugby matches, football matches, all over the place. And to be honest, I saw some very special skills. The uh, ones which stick out are sit, um, in Barnet Castle School, some very famous rugby players went there. Um, so I understand what makes a school special. And believe you me, this school here, St Edward's, is very, very special. Okay? There are a number of things I like about it, but I'll tell you about that in a moment. Let's wander up to the middle school. Now, the, the middle school consists of three year groups. The boys progress from there in year six to here in year seven. Now, the, in year seven, we have a kind of transition unit which the boys start whilst they're in year six, and that is reading a book called Hensuki's Kingdom. Now, this book's actually really, really, really sweet. So, if you do get the opportunity, I would suggest you read it. It's an easy read, you, you, you finish it in a couple of hours. Anyway, it's about a little boy who's on an island um, and he meets a Japanese soldier who can as long after the war has finished. And they get on together and so on and so on. And it's a very sweet story. Now what we do, the boys read that in year six. The boys read that in year six. And when they come up into year seven, the activities, the lessons that they have, maths, um, science, um, English, they all try to um, make a use of the transition from the junior school to the middle school using Kenzuki's Kingdom. Yeah. Now then, in year seven, obviously it's excitement for the boys, but still here it's in it, which is great. You can come in here in kindergarten, junior school, middle school, senior school, IB. You can even come back as a school teacher, which one or two members of staff actually have done. It's such a special place. They want to be here all the time. Year seven, it's very, very special for them. It's something new. And we have house tutors who look after the boys. They really take care of them. They get them organized. They get them thinking. And what we really want is we want the boys to become independent. Independent thinkers, independent learners, and to be good citizens of Malta or whichever country they're from, because we have those all over the world. Here. Um, so in year seven, we have, as I said, we have this very, very strong approach to 
a holistic education, not just the subject, but about developing the person, developing the, the child, making that child as all parents want their child to be, a nice, happy, caring, caring child. Now, this college, I'm telling you, is a very, very caring community. I mean, to be honest, I've never really seen anything like it. You get the older boys looking after the younger boys, you get the younger boys pulling the hairs of the older boys. It's great, it's all good fun. Two things that you want from a school. You want your boys to be educated, obviously that's going to happen, and you want them to be happy. Now this is a happy school, without one shadow of a doubt. Okay? The children are very, very happy, and I do believe that happy children perform well. Now then, in year eight, the boys are very much um, into the routine of the middle school. They're getting on with their subjects, and towards as to which subjects they're going to take. For instance, in year seven and year eight, they do science. But when they move into year nine, when they have their choices, so when they make their choices for the subjects they are going to take up to O level, when they get towards the end of year eight, they might do not just science, biology, chemistry, physics. It's more specialized. Now, some people might argue that in year eight, uh, is that a wise time to take that choice? It's always been the case. I did it, probably you did it when you were the same age. And there's always the facility as well. If a wrong choice has been made, if it's possible, we can move the child. There's always a little bit of flexibility. We certainly don't want the children to be upset in any way, shape or form. Just look at this ground here. Who would not be happy in a school like this? It's absolutely fantastic. Usually on a morning, um, when the boys come in, we start lessons, um, well, we start registration at uh, 8.30, and I would line the boys up here, the year sevens, the year eights, and the year nines, and then I would give them a talk, or if something's been happening, something's going on, um, I would uh, express um, my concerns, we would talk about it, if any of the boys have any questions, they're always... Um, they can ask me at any point in time. And if anyone has any questions or if anyone wants to email me at any time, please do so at middle at stedmonds.edu.mt. It's easy to find. Now then, so the boys would be brought up here by their house tutors. There are six classrooms along here. We'll just have a quick look at the in the world, if you don't mind. Now this is the typical middle school classroom. We have the whiteboard, we have the fans, we have displays. The desk would normally be spaced out, um, but obviously the cleaners have been in, making sure that everything's ready for when our boys do eventually come back. Which I hope <laughs> sooner than later. Another reason why this school is so special. Um, when I was in my school in England, uh, the private school, one of the reasons why I stayed there so long um, and I was there about 23 years, um, was the school was always, always moving forward. Now, we're moving forward here at St. Edwards. When I arrived, we didn't have that fantastic running track, and I've only been here 11 years. So all the audience, perhaps, who are watching now, will be thinking, my goodness me, those lucky guys, they've got that running track, they've got that football field. I wish we had that in our dear. Boys, you can come back any time, you know that. In fact, the amount of all the audience coming back into this college is unbelievable. Why is that? Because they love it, because it's special. And we have another look at the classroom down here. This would be how the desks are normally spread out um, for lessons. And obviously, we will be putting measures in place when we do come back in September because of the obvious reasons for safety. Very nice. As I've said, the year sevens, they have their um, Kenzuki's Kingdom, their project, and the work that they do from the Kenzuki's Kingdom, they display around the college, and it's always, always nice to see. 
the areas of um, the subject choices. In year seven and eight, there's always lots going on. There are ex um, excursions abroad. Um, obviously, we'll have to see how that goes. We have live-ins, which are fantastic. The boys love them. A live-in is where the boys actually sleep in school. Um, there's all sorts of activities going on. So it's not all just about being in the classroom. Okay, there's lots and lots of activities going on. I mean, we've got these fantastic sporting facilities, um, but not everybody's in. A sports person. We have different people with different capabilities. We have some good boys in drama. We have a boy who's singing. Put, he's fantastic. He put the hairs on the back of my neck when he sings. It's incredible. He's absolutely marvellous. We have boys who will have passed their theory tests and practical tests in the piano and different musical instruments. There is so much talent in this college. And what I what I always like to see is people fulfilling their full potential. That's what St. Edward's College is about. That's what the middle school is about. We um, teach through a system called TUL, which is to think about something, to understand it, and to actually learn it. Now, TUL is, to be honest, what all teachers have been doing in St. Edward's for ages. You know, they, 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 they understand that children need to think about something, they've got to understand it, and then they learn it. And to be honest, that's what life's about. You know, you've got problems in life, you've got to think about it, you've got to think, well, how can I solve this? You've got to understand what the problem actually is, and then you learn how to solve it. And that's what we do here in every lesson. Try and think of it as being a problem. Now, another thing which I um, emphasize to the boys a lot, okay, is to fulfill their full potential. As I said, we have that fantastic running track. Sorry, all the audience. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. We've got that fantastic running track, and we have boys who've created uh, sporting records, sporting achievements. It doesn't matter if you win the race or you come second in the race. It's being a part of St. Edward's, which is important, and doing your personal best. Now, you might come fifth in the race, you might come last in the race, but if your time was 10 seconds better, then there we are. That's a success, that's not a failure, okay? Well, in, in life, we're going to have people who get first prize, we're going to have people who get second prize. That doesn't matter. As long as you are achieving your personal best, that's what we want in the classrooms, and that's what we want out there. Now, those of you who, um, who know Molly quite well, um, it's a beautiful island, okay, it's a beautiful island, it's got lots and lots of history, um, this building here dates back to the 1700s, there's lots of history here, the college um, has lots of history, before it opened as a boys college in 1929, um, it was, uh, it had been a hospital during the First World War, now then, <laughs> I think that during the First World War, you had doctors and nurses looking after their patients, giving them the best care in the community, the best help that they possibly can. You know what I think's changed? Nothing. We're here, we have the teachers, we have the students. What are the teachers doing? They're giving the best service in their individual subjects for all of our boys, making them happy, making them educated, and making them motivated. Now, as I said, the people who know um, Molly quite well will know what I'm talking about when I talk about the letter, the capital city, the beautiful city, and it's got a lovely garden, some lovely gardens called the Upper Baraka Gardens. Now then, if you go into the Upper Baraka Gardens, and you, you, you must do this at some point, and you look across the Grand Harbour, you think of the history, you think of during Second World War, Spitfires flying in, you think about a long time ago, the siege, uh, the Great Siege, absolutely fantastic history. But if you look on the skyline, the building which dominates, which looks down on the whole of Mulder, the building which dominates the entire view is St. Edmunds College. St. Edmunds College. It dominates because it's special, and I'm sure that all of the all the audience who are perhaps listening would agree with me entirely. They love this college, I love this college, because it is very, very special. Just look at that building there. Absolutely beautiful. That's our chapel now, of course. Absolutely lovely. 
Now then, I am going to I'm going to leave you now. I think I've talked enough, and I'm going to hand you over to uh, uh, Mr. Ferrantia. He's our sports teacher. He's our sports uh, guy. Who's the expert? He's also one of the top basketball coaches in the country. He's an absolutely really really nice guy. Um, thank you, thank you. And if you need anything, if you want anything, give me an email. No problem. Okay, take care. And I'll be taking you around the we're actually we're gonna go through a walk uh, and we're gonna walk through the journey of every uh, sport, every individual student uh, passes through this sport from year one and year two. Actually the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that the first day when you enroll your kids at St. Edward's uh, your uh, boys will be affiliated with a house. That Campbell, Blue Congreve, and Green became. And uh, later on, if you follow uh, what, what we'll be saying later in the coming minutes, you will, this will make more sense uh, and you will know why they are actually part of this house. Uh, the house, house system in the city of Scotland is a big part of the tradition. Okay. Uh, there, there, there have been uh, a lot of, if we look at sports days, the first sports days date back to 1933. And the first was in 1934, so we are talking about a, a, a very big tradition over there. But let's talk more on the in physical education. We went in year one and year two uh, in physical education. We start from uh, what the boys know. We start by giving the, the boys the alphabet that they will use later on in sports, which means we go through crawling, uh, jumping, catching, throwing. Mainly in year one and year two, your boys will, will go through individual skills uh, for a simple reason that the team concept will start going in more towards the end of year two and the beginning of year three. Uh, the boy, and the five, six year old boy, is, will be focused on improving his skill. Balance, all, all the all the skills you see in future sports, which are actually there to make school more school. Uh, the sports festival we have for year one year. We can hear we are next to the track. The sports festival will also be geared to, towards uh, these skills. The skills they acquire throughout the year, they will then celebrate in, 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 in one in one event. They will enjoy a big event in which they are all winners and they are all enjoying the sport events without having the direct competition, with at the, which at that age, the boys are all competitive. Boys are all competitive and they will all do their skill to their best. But we will not give uh, too much uh, emphasis on the winning and the losing, but more on the actual learning of the skill. Then in year three, we go more into a direct competition. We start slowly, slowly, we start introducing the running events. Actually, in year four, we also have the cross country, which if you look around here, we have a very nice bastion run. Okay, the boys go mad about this run. Okay, because for them, all right, for us, it's a very safe run because we are always seeing the boys running here. But for them, they're going into something which they think it's unknown. They're going into something which they think, you know, they're running in between the big trees and they're running in. And basically, it, and in year four, they, they, we have a competition, an official competition between the houses. It's just a 1K run. So it's just one lap and two laps around the track. But for them, it, it will be obviously uh, qualify as a, as a long distance event. Then also in year three we also start introducing sport related skills. So we we also through games, through the fact that the boys they love watching the NBA, they love watching Steph Curry, they love watching the Champions League, Messi, Ronaldo. So we use those as, as, a, as an item to give them to give them the sport related skills. So we think that skills are for them obviously in their dreams they are being Yeah. 
year six, in year five, but those are not that uh, regular because those will be uh, depending on invitations uh, from other schools. But in, in, with regards to uh, year seven onwards, then we have we are creating slightly bit more considerations, and we compete with other schools in various sports uh, and in various categories. So under 12, under 13, under 15, football, volleyball, basketball, and so on and so forth. Um, basically, one positive thing we have is there is a one hour break, which obviously we, know we don't expect uh, we don't expect the boys to stay sitting down and eating for the whole hour. They will have a 10, maybe 15 minutes at the end of the break. However, uh, during this hour, they will have organized in their house game, so this is where the house colors are there. They will have also the opportunity to train and be part of the school with all the good things that this gets with the responsibilities, okay, and, and, and so on and so forth. And then, uh, basically, one important aspect we have in the middle school is that we also give the opportunity to the boys to uh, take the as an examinable subject. So basically, in year 9, uh, in year 8, actually, the boys have the option to choose and go to year 9 and study physical education as an option. And this uh, is a very, very good opportunity for the boys who are into, into sports, to maybe they want to go into sports journalism or into sports management at the later stage, or even just sports with and so on. This will give you a sound uh, space for later studying, studying your actual, your actual course. And it's also, it is, it is uh, very much fun. I mean, it's, it's one of the subjects we take the boys, we take them swimming, we take them doing the athletics, uh, qualifiers, and so on. So, so um, uh, with regards to, uh, I, uh, to the sixth form, then, yeah, we have uh, the CAS program, Creativity Action Service, and uh, actually some of the students opt to do their extra uh, credits, their extra credits as part of the school course. As a result, they will have the option to uh, join any of the sports activities going in or going on during break, being it uh, in the house activities or also school team training or just uh, social, for example, keeping fit in the in the gym, like uh, using the sled, using the ciclet, uh, and and this uh, this would, would be part of their of their CAS. Basically, the amount of the number of hours they need for uh, the creativity action service. Here, actually, now we are talking about sports. We will be passing next to the volleyball court. Uh, the volleyball court. Uh, is one of those competitions actually which is not uh, embodied at the MSSL, but it's one of those competitions in which uh, we take part uh, in, in, with Sport Malta. As a matter of fact, Sport Malta offers a number of, of, of activities, and where we see that the Malta Student Sports Federation doesn't cater for, for example, for a particular sport, for example, table tennis or, for example, uh, athletics. We uh, take part in uh, uh, global, the global competition, the, the full uh, the competition, other with other schools, not only the church, individual and private schools, but in that case, like the end of this country, like uh, athletics, I will pass, pass you on to uh, Mr. Kadir Jamid, Mr. Karwana Smith, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Karwana Smith now for the uh, head of senior school. Hello, uh, I'm Daniel Karwana Smith and I am the head of senior school here at St. Edward's. First of all, our senior school covers academic years 10 and 11, which would correspond to ages of about uh, 14 to 16 year old uh, we're starting off here in what we call our English uh, corridor. Okay, it is where most of our English uh, English lessons 
as well as a sort of display area for any material the um, the boys have presented okay during the year right now it's obviously a bit uh, vacant but normally this would be full of student works if we were to go into one of the classrooms one thing that we uh, pride ourselves on is the fact that it looks kind of different to what you would expect so we have a lot of displays all around it almost all the english classrooms have um, a small library, mini library, pretty much. You have things like posters, student works, are sometimes found as well, um, different uh, billboards, anything that will help the students remain motivated. There is also a little display there on the desk relating to not mistaken to Macbeth, but definitely relating to uh, drama. So, again, our point is to engage our students. It's not just a teacher uh, speaking to the classroom. It's an open engagement, there's a lot of debate going on. So everyone is, is free to express themselves during a lesson. Apart from English, which is our main uh, language of instruction due obviously to the number of different um, uh, countries our students come from, we also have a variety of other languages, Maltese at uh, first and second, and second language level, as well as French, Italian and Spanish at the uh, second language level, they're all offered. Apart from the languages, we have a long list of subjects available in senior school. It is um, it's on our website, just to name a few. We have religion and ethics, the uh, traditional humanities of geography and history, and sciences, which we'll go into later on, as well as um, the business studies, of uh, business studies, economics and accounts, um, as well as other subjects like art, drama, there's quite an extensive list. Just going down one of the various corridors around college, um, just to point out, we have an extensive extracurricular and uh, extracurricular department, so it's not just academics, we have a lot of other things going on. We have a TEFL department, a language for those students who maybe are not uh, as accustomed to English. Uh, small geography uh, display as well, we have to rotate those every so often. We have a sort of info point here, which serves very, very well during the scholastic year to post daily updates to both staff and our students, as well as another work here showcasing sports. So, any kind of fixtures. Alright, so um, apart from the academics, which we were mentioning. One thing which I also want to point out is the fact that senior school is a time when uh, our students are going through quite a lot of changes, both uh, obviously physically, but also emotionally. And one thing which we pride ourselves on is the fact that our teachers are aware of this and will do all they can um, to support our students. So it's not just about academics, we look at the whole uh, thing, the whole well-being for our students. If need be, we also have a um, counsellor stationed here at college. If need be, we can also refer. So it's it's much more holistic, not just um, the grades that we look at. It's the whole picture. We are here in what we can call the sciences uh, department, sciences corridor, where we have um, three of our labs, the uh, chemistry, biology, and physics. Inside the physics lab, well, one of them, um, you can see it's quite a large space, well laid out. Normally, there would be uh, quite a lot of activity going on here, more, more uh, equipment laid out. Obviously, it's a bit quiet right now, but this is one of the labs that gets used quite uh, frequently. It's also equipped with editing, it works with these of sinks, everything is available for our students. from it we have the biology lab which I believe is kind of my favorite because it incorporates elements of geography as well. So again very similar lots of charts and um, our resident skeleton here at college <laughs> models anything that we will um, you know make there again it is well laid out a number of different spaces 
spaces as well as the fact that it's not used in the industry for student works and anything which, uh, which they may be working on. Particularly, these labs are used for practicals, which, make a, which will make a part of the final grade for our students. Our last lab is the chemistry one. Again, normally would be uh, you know a higher activity point right now, but again, this would normally be used for students to store any equipment they need, uh, lab coats, everything is available, as well as uh, a number of rooms for our uh, chemistry requirements, anything the boys might need. So, to sort of close off, where does all this bring us to? Our students, um, once they finish senior school, will work either towards their MATSEC or their uh, Cambridge, the IGCSC grades. The difference is, MATSEC tends to be taken by almost everyone if it is the local um, qualification. Cambridge, or IGCSC, is uh, taken by a, by a certain number of students and it guarantees an international qualification as well. If your students can have two qualifications um, for what, one course, it gives them another chance uh, to get their grades. Basically, we prepare all our students for both, and then it is at their discretion, whichever they, uh, they prefer. But from our end, we give them all the, the choices we can get. I will pass you on now to our Head of Extracurricular and Humanities, um, Sabela. Thank you very much for joining us. If you have any queries, um, feel free to just send it in. Hi everyone and good afternoon. I am Samantha Bell and I'm the head of Humanities and of Extracurricular Activities. So, what are the humanities that we offer here at St. Edward's College? Our humanities are very vast and our young Edwardians start learning all about what is life and the world around them since year three. From the age of year three in junior school, they start to approach the subjects of geography and history, and they carry on learning about these subjects all throughout their junior school years and even the middle school years. What are the humanities? Why are the humanities so important for our Edwardians? We here at St. Edwards, we create global citizens for the world. And thus to have a holistic, approach to education, our students need to learn all about what makes our society so special and to engage in the world around them. They learn how to become risk takers, inquirers, they question the world and we get them in touch with current affairs. As they move on from the middle school, we, the humanities, apart from being geography, history and religion, it branches out into multiple subjects. These include accounts, economics, business and management, and also ethics as a choice, as an alternative to religion. Here I would like to take you back to one of our most dynamic places in Hope St. Edward's College. Here I'm taking you to this positive genius classroom and we have the business and management class. I have chosen this place, in fact, because over here, this GD does a lot of teamwork. In fact, as the humanities subjects, the students tend to do a lot of group work. They engage in very animated discussions, debates, and in this classroom, this, the teacher and the students even in high grade level, they prepare for the JAYE, which is the Young Enterprise Program. And every year they have a competition and they participate with other schools. Also in this class, we have the program of the school council, which takes place here. And in fact, in order to teach the humanities in St. Edward's College, we don't just rely on teaching through the books. 
we like to engage our students through PowerPoints, sessions in class, and they also create a lot of projects as well and presentations. We like our students to be good speakers and to be able also to express their opinions. I'm going to move to another location as well. After, when the students move on from the middle to the senior school, apart from those options, when they choose the IB diploma, there are other humanities subjects as well. These include theory of knowledge, psychology, as well as philosophy. These two fall under the humanities branch. And in these lessons, the students engage with their teachers to debate in classroom what is going on, what topics they are discussing during the day. In fact, that is very important with humanities because they tend um, to help the students to become more active learners in the classroom and employers. Now we're moving back inside our main school building where I will be able to show you a bit of the extracurricular program. We in St. Edwards, we believe that the extracurriculars are very, very important. Apart from sports though, which Mr. Fernando quite in detail, I would like to also discuss what are the other activities offered to students both during break times and even after school hours. During break times, um, various teachers throughout the junior school, the middle and the senior school sections offer activities in break, such as the Echo Scuola, Mrs. Malio is explaining about the gardening that goes on. Um, we believe a lot in instilling a sense of responsibility to our students. So we teach them about looking after the environment and all. And we're back up. <laughs> so I was talking about how important are the executive here at St. Edward's. So we believe that our students, in order to be ready for the world outside, they need to develop various skills, such as interacting with different individuals, problem solving, and this we enhance through the our extracurricular program. In fact, one of the most anticipated activities that our students always love to attend during the year are the living experiences where our students from year 5 upwards, they can come here to school and they sleep over for around two months, a Wednesday, a Thursday and a Friday. And during this living, after their normal school day routine, they have tea and biscuits, they chill with their friends and then in the evening they will organize various activities for them where they can explore the school evening in the darkness. And the children really, really love it. They go home telling thousands of different stories <laughs> and over time. Apart from the limits, we also like to offer various trips abroad for students from year six upwards. These trips abroad are not only educational, but also fun. And these trips of blood help the students to teach them a sense of responsibility, a sense of belonging to a community, okay, as well as helping them to become a bit more independent. And they experience a foreign country, which is not more than um, away even from their parents as well. Over here, we have a second human manage. I would like to show you one of my favorite parts of the school, okay? some of our school's achievements and programs. Um, our school took part in various climate change initiatives, uh, OSCOLA, um, even International Day of the Girl. We have even we've been awarded the green flag multiple times. We've taken part and held even the Dr. Crown Foundation, Oceans, um, the LEAF program, and various art competitions which our art teachers are constantly engaging our students in. 
as from next year we are also looking into developing a scouts group as well as enlarging our extracurricular program after school hours. Why after school hours? Because apart from engaging our students during the one hour break that they have, our teachers and other third parties which we involve ourselves with the same networks, we also offer after school activities ranging from drama, arts, sports, athletics, and what is even favorable amongst the students. For example, science is very popular as well as robotics and computing. I'm sure that your child coming to St. Peter's will never get bored because he can have his day full, full of engaging and meaningful activities where you will sure you make memories that he will church for the rest of his life. Here and now I will pass on the word to Mr. Tony Nadia, our head of IB curriculum, as well as an older body himself. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Deva. So, um, as I was now being introduced, I'm Jordan Gallia. I'm the head of the sixth form here. I'm in my second year as head of the sixth form. However, I've been working here for a total of seven years because I also teach physics here in the school. However, as she pointed out, being an older boy, I've been close to spent almost two decades in, the, <laughs> in these buildings. Um, so, uh, the sixth form follows on from the senior school. And so, the age of students are aged typically between 16 and 18 in the sixth form program. And uh, it's slightly different from the senior school in, in that it's co educational. So, like the university, I think that we accept um, boys and girls here and from all over the world. Um, we, what the program we follow is the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, which is very international, so it attracts students from all over. Um, and it's, it's the only section of school we do not follow the Maltese national curriculum. We follow a different curriculum exclusively. Um, there are certain advantages to this. The chief among which we feel that with students doing the International Baccalaureate Diploma, which is done in over 170 countries, we give them the opportunity to pursue their studies at university, not just in Malta, but also all over the world. And as a result, we have students at the University of Malta, but also at UCLA, Bologna in Italy, Imperial College London, Manchester, Edinburgh, University of Delft, and Amsterdam in, in the Netherlands, wherever. <laughs> we have students in all corners of the globe, coming from all four corners of the globe, and then going out to all four corners of the globe. So, uh, we're currently in our sixth form corridor. So, you've seen a number of the classes that sixth form has used already. Um, around the school, but here is a good example of some of the classes that we have on this floor. This, for example, is the philosophy class. Um, yeah, but on this corridor, in these classrooms, this is where typically our students would meet every morning for registration, and also the end of the corridor we have a common room which we'll go and see uh, very, very soon. So this was the philosophy class, and moving on here we have one of our another English classroom. This is for English and the second language. And at this point, I think it's best that I explain the kind of subjects that we offer at the IB. So, on the IB diploma, students have to study six subjects. Three of them will be at higher level, and three of them will be at a standard level. Now, from these subjects, these six subjects, they have to pick from a range of different areas. Uh, they have to pick two languages, so a first language and a second language. Um, uh, we offer English as a first language, however, we get onto international students and for students who don't uh, have English as their first language, they can also study their mother tongue through the school supported self taught program. And as a result, in the past, we've had students doing Chinese, Japanese, Russian, even Sydney's, which was a language I discovered uh, through this program. And then so we also offer a second language, we offer French, Italian, and Spanish, which students can continue their studies in, or else they can uh, learn them from scratch. In terms of humanity subjects, um, we have about eight points in the mouth. We offer business, economics, uh, philosophy, uh, psychology, and also environmental systems and societies. And then the science subjects, where you have uh, traditionally physics, chemistry, and biology, but also environmental systems and societies again. 
Students have to study a math subject on the IB, um, but there are different options for maths there. And then the sixth and final group is not a compulsory, but we offer the subject when we offer visual arts, which is a very, very interesting course, um, which they can do, which will encompass not just uh, the art you think in the traditional sense, but they can really branch out and then express themselves. So this space is our common room. This is a place where students can hang out and relax in break time, so they can have a lesson. And as you can see, we also have plenty of resources for them. They've got a lot of uh, books for them to download the research. We have online subscriptions which they can access to their own uh, devices or through the computer here. We also have a lot of subscriptions such as The Economist and the Internet New Scientist, which the students can use in order to develop research with their assignments. And the last part of the diploma is something called the core of the diploma. So, with the core of the diploma, all IB students have to uh, do three things. An extended essay, theory of knowledge, and also something called CAS, Creativity, Action and Service, which I believe has already been mentioned um, uh, before. So, the extended essay is an academic essay where students learn the skills of how to write an academic essay. So through this extended essay, they will learn how to write a proposal, uh, work with a tutor, write academically, and um, also learn how to reference. Now this develops brilliant skills for them for when they go to university and they have to write academic essays and also their dissertation. And it gives them a really big advantage. The second part of the core is TOK, Theory of Knowledge where students through the subject will learn thinking skills and how, as a human race, we acquire knowledge and how we apply knowledge. And it really helps them branch open their, their thoughts. And finally, creativity, action and service, which is through the diploma, they have to do a number of activities over the two years to help improve themselves creatively, actively in the service of others. So students can do this individually and uh, use their own interests and develop their own interests. However, at school we also offer a lot of other options. I think it was already mentioned, but there's the Junior Achieving Young Enterprise Program, which is a fantastic opportunity, uh, which would also count for CAS. We have the English Speaking Union, which is a public speaking course, which we um, encourage our students to take part in every year, a two-day course. And then they can take part in a competition, a national competition, uh, for Debate Academy and even get the chance to represent Malta abroad and we've had students in the past win this competition nationally and represent the school abroad and yeah that's it for, for, for CAS I think and so applications are open for a sixth form they, uh, they're going oh well they were <laughs> we've generated a lot of interest uh, this year so if you want to apply by, uh, please get in contact uh, by email or call. Cool. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in, uh, especially those who've been in for the whole for the whole time. You've been here for about an hour and a half, I think. So thank you very much. I will now pass you on back to Jade. Hi everyone. Thank you for for watching us and for lasting this long. Um, uh, we've been through all the different sections over the past hour and a half. Um, so some of you might have missed some of the information. If you have and you have some more questions, please do email us. Um, we're sorry about some of the connection problems and about some of the technical issues. Um, but it was our first time. I think we've done super well for the first time. We will be having some more live sessions um, uh, in, in, the coming, in the coming months. Um, so please um, tune in and keep following us. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.